Hello and welcome to Satish Chha show. Today let's talk about what is happening at the National Stock Exchange. It's turning out to be a very engaging scam, one more scam. Some call it bigger than Harshad Mehta's scam. Some see um, all kinds of uh, connections to all kinds of powers that be. It's a scam all the same but it also connects religiosity, the gurus and others. The name that once you associate anything with gurus anything uh, passes so what has happened to summarize is that chitra ramakrishna now she is not just another person ss nadkarni was a legendary idbi chairman legendary for maybe wrong reasons but he was a very powerful man who uh, was chairman of industrial development bank of india and he was the one charged with creating at one time sebi or at least he was in that powerful body's um, formation chitra ramakrishna was involved in creating sebi in fact in writing the constitution or um, whatever papers went into that so she was an ultimate insider a someone promoted by a protege of nadkarni the the legendary idbi chairman and from there she has been an ultimate insider and ultimately she became around 2013 the uh, first lady md managing director and ceo of national stock exchange media has been talking about it in a, its own ways uh, some analysts said it's the largest stock exchange with 4 trillion uh, valuation that's clearly not correct it is one of the top 10 at the bottom of the top 10 the big is about 1/10th 1/10th the size of uh, Uh, either nasdaq or, or new york stock exchange in terms of the valuation of the companies that trade on it now that doesn't decide the value of the stock exchange that's decided by how much money they make and money they make is dependent on trading and ultimately if you see i think the revenue of um national stock exchange uh, last year was about 1.2 billion dollars or something in that range something close to 9000 crore rupees now that's not a small uh, sum chitra ramakrishna the first female managing director and ceo apparently uh, did something very interesting which now turns out to be uh, has the scent of a scam what she did was she hired someone at the suggestion of someone who happened to be uh, not a human being who only lived as uh, some kind of uh, invisible guru who lived in the himalayas or probably in the heavens who only communicated with her through emails so you can see a god communicating with any human through email must be some god probably easy to find because we can easily trace ip addresses these days but nothing of the kind has been done so she chitra ramakrishna was communicating at the behest of some god or some someone who was close to god who lived in the himalayas whom she claims not to have seen ever but there's no need for that but she trusted and she believed who wrote to her as as if he was her god and uh, she responded to him as if she was a mere mortal in front of that god so the god told her to appoint a particular human being a very clearly identified human being called uh, Mr Subramanian he used to do a 15 lakh rupees job for a subsidiary of public sector company a very old british company which finally became government of india company bamar lorry based in calcutta what are the subsidiaries of that had hired that man at a salary of 15 lakh rupees suddenly chitra ramakrishna's company nsc national stock exchange raised the salary of this man to something close to 1.7 crore rupees not only that he was supposed to work for only 3 days one from home plus three from the office then later on she also increased her salary over the period of her duration uh, to about close to 5 crore rupees 4 point some odd crore call it 5 how did that happen because um, apparently he wanted to give one more extra day now he still had 3 days from office two days from home and he was given business class ticket to travel from chennai to bombay he lived in chennai uh, this gentleman and he apparently had um, a good run 
There are also questions about uh, co-location of servers. There are questions about um, uh, some information being leaked. Uh, they were all being done more or less in the framework of um, rules and regulations. Obviously, that's what we expect from someone who's, who has been ultimate insider for 30 years, primarily in finance sector, knew IDBI, wrote the book on SEBI, so clearly she knew her rules. So you don't expect her to violate the rules. So within the rules, she kept doing whatever was possible. And one question being raised is, a man who earns about uh, in crores, why was he not noted as a key executive of the company? A key executive of the company is a certain position that, that allows greater um, you know, monitoring or, or, or kind of um, uh, looking at the person more closely and people can look at everything, the data about the person becomes public. And that was not done because he was not really an executive. He was just an advisor to the managing director. In any case, there are many questions of propriety procedures which have been raised. But what's more important is she claimed all this was being done. And now we have the emails to prove in a 190 page report with inside CB, which basically suggests that she was uh, basically following the orders on email of some man who claimed to be God. Now, so you call him a yogi, uh, just like we have some yogi who are visible to us. This yogi was invisible yogi, call him some invisible yogi, divine yogi, whatever the names may be. But clearly the guy is supposed to be not visible to us. Only investigative agencies can find out, but they haven't really woken up to it because Sevi hasn't forwarded the case to them. Sevi believes Chitra Ramakrishna being old, Sevi hand in the sense of even founding of Sevi, she was involved in that. So clearly she knew the rules and, and they have given a slap on her wrist. Apparently she left the, the job quite some time back, but the matter was brought to the fore by some whistleblower recently. So, you know, but the, from my point of view, the, it's not just Chitra Ramakrishna alone. Over the past 30, 35 years that I have seen, I've been amazed at the kind of power these gurus have. I've been amazed how chief justices of India, the cabinet ministers, the chief ministers, they go and, you know, sit on their feet. They take instructions from them. These gurus, in fact, I know of one guru who is supposed to have appointed someone a chief minister of a state by removing another shishya from the same position and then bringing back the same shishya back to the same position. But there are many there are people who became chief justices of high courts because of some gurus. Uh, many justices are being spoken about, many secretaries, many ministers. They all have some guru somewhere. I keep asking, what is it about these gurus that excites people, that they become so important? So, of course, the normal answer is our interest in our own future, to know something which is unknowable. These people have the capacity to charm us with uh, information, with at least they convince us that they know our future and they guide people throughout I've seen people, in fact, if you see a movie called Corporate, even there you can see Madhur Bandarkar has, dis, uh, has has portrayed the role of a guru, how important the role is, almost saying without saying so, that uh, the between the two business houses fighting each other, the one who had the guru always had the upper hand. Now, so gurus uh, and corporate sector, we need to find a way to basically understand the, the nature of that. So far, not much has been done in that space. And uh, I would say that uh, that remains much less uh, investigated or discovered territory. While we all talk about it, we don't quite know how it works. So Gurus of India, uh, their, their reach is uh, really, uh, I mean, inside the system throughout, it's beyond our imagination, beyond our capacity to understand. In this government particularly, the central government or, or rather union government, gurus have had a whole, whole different scale of role to play as we can see from the way things have happened. Of course, they've been given pride of place. They have been calling the shards. They, they have complete immunity from everything. And, and they have been running uh, as if uh, they owned the whole place. And they have been uh, giving calls for 
uh, you know, genocide and anything. The gurus can do anything in the current regime that we are living in. So the point is, who are these gurus? How do they become gurus? How do they acquire such power? Uh, what is human failure to do with it? All these questions have, have to be answered. But as of now, what we are looking at is that uh, a very clear case of managing director and CEO of the National Stock Exchange, one of the major top 10 exchanges in the world and surely largest in India. And uh, it's dependent on, dependent on technology. The funny part is NSC was formed as something which could use technology compared to other exchanges. Now, technology and yogi, how do they coexist? That's something very interesting as well. So in other words, those who are leaders, those who are yogis, those who know how to um, charm the system, those who know how to lead, those who know how to find their ways into the system, no matter how much transparency we try to bring in through technologies or process procedures, they will find their way to, to be on the top of things. That is the question of human ingenuity. The question is, as common citizens, as people who are watching our system uh, to grow and work for the common man or the last man, we have surely great interest in understanding how these things are basically done and uh, how, do, how, how do we unravel these things uh, as such. That's a very, very big job. Uh, not that one um, person who talks to you uh, has conversations with you as, as part of like my show or many other shows can do, but there has to be a way. We need uh, some investigation into these things, either through the agencies or through investigative journalism. All that requires different kind of commitment of resources and skills. And, and I think to, it'll be probably, this is the tip of the iceberg, I would say. So if we look at this as tip of the iceberg and start investigating the role of gurus in our um, running of our system, whether corporate or government or any, and in our personal lives. I've been totally amazed by the kind of faith in gurus that I've seen in India's political and business leadership. And of course, common man is always afraid and, and frailty, that's human. So um, this is one opportunity for us to uh, start asking the right questions. Surprisingly, most of the media people I've seen talking about it, in my opinion, they didn't seem to have done their homework as well as we need to do. Many people, somebody talked about NSC being the biggest in the world, which is clearly not true. Somebody talked about many innuendos, which are possible, but they don't seem to make sense to any kind of logic that I can see. Having said that, all the concerns they have, that this smells of a scam, there's no question about it. It does smell of a big scam. The question is, was it only worthy of the amount of money given to that employee or there was a little more to it? We don't quite know. With that, uh, thank you very much for uh, being with me today. I look forward to your questions. Your questions inform me and um, I hope they are going to be helping me and let, it, let them be tough questions, but please do ask nicely so I'm able to learn from them and uh, uh, take that as a feedback to, to bring together a better conversation, more engaging one. Until next episode, I take uh, leave of you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.